Hello and welcome to Forgotten Fronts, to the fifth episode of my Scourge of War Waterloo playthrough, where we'll be playing the scenario, The Sunken Lane, where we take command of Bylan's Brigade, which is the first troops to encounter the attacking troops of Jerlon's Corps. But now, the history. If you don't want to hear the history and go right into the scenario, a time should come up on your screen. If I'm not extremely lazy, if so, it will be in the comment section. Now! Count William Frederick Van Bylen commanded the 1st Brigade of the 2nd Netherlands Infantry Division, who at Quatre Bras reinforced the forces of Prince Maurice of Saxe Weimar in the Beausseau Wood, holding his flank in Gemiel Corps against superior numbers until reinforcements arrived, however in the process losing a quarter of his brigade. The 27th Jaeger and the 5th National Militia lost particularly heavily. Moving forward to Waterloo, they were deployed on the right flank near La Haye Song. The brigade consisted of the 27th Jaeger and the 5th National Militia Battalion, as well as the 7th and 8th National Militia Battalions, who were all Dutch, and the 7th Line Infantry, which was a Belgian unit. The brigade numbered roughly 3,000 men. Their original position had their flanks exposed, and they were deployed in a forward slope, deployed 200 paces in front of any other unit, and the men were ankle deep in clay. And so their division commander, excuse the pronunciation, Hendrik George Propulsor Seditsky, I'll give everybody a moment to stop laughing. Okay, let's get back to it. Ordered the units of Bylance Brigade, except for the Jaeger, to form up behind the hedge line sunken lane. The Jaeger in the meantime were to form a skirmish line from La Haison to Papillot. One thing to take note of is that the sunken lane of Waterloo was nothing like the bloody lane of Antietam. The sunken lane of Waterloo was one and a half to two meters deep, or five feet to seven feet deep. These orders arrived around noon, one hour before the artillery bombardment. Similar orders were given to the British, except around ten. It is unknown if this delay was due to sloppy staff work, however. But now the brigade's flanks were secured by Pax Highlanders on their left and Kemp's British Line Infantry and 95th Rifles, Captain Rogers and Captain Byfield's batteries on their right, who also had to fall back, and drive their cannons by hand over the ridge, then cutting down the hedges in their way to form an open field of fire. However, as the 80 guns of the Grand Battery began to open fire, the story splits between the British accounts and the Dutch-Belgian accounts. The British claim that they ran before first contact, particularly the men of Kemp's Brigade. The men of Pax Brigade were a bit more forgiving, saying that they held the line for a while but then broke, not returning to the battlefield. However, in reality, the men of Bylands Brigade lied down in the sunken lane during the artillery bombardment. Bylands Brigade took heavy cannon fire, especially compared to the British units, as they were so close to the two artillery batteries, particularly the rightmost units as they were the closest. However, around 2pm they still stood, well, lied, as Jerlon's corps of roughly 13,000 men approached. As James Atten of the 42nd Black Watch described, France now pushed on our Belgic allies. Violence Brigade waited until the French to approach until they reached around 50 paces, then the Dutch got up and fired, the British pouring into lead fire upon them. Eventually the Dutch militia broke. However, the 7th Belgian Line Infantry rallied on the British. The Prince of Orange later described that Byland's brigade received the first shock and was cut up. In the fighting, both Byland and the commander of the 7th, Colonel Van Sanden, both wounded. The men of the 7th Line Infantry became national heroes, and after the battle, when the Duke of Wellington was inspecting the men, complimented the actions of Byland's brigade. Welcome back to those of you who didn't want to hear the history. We're getting into the scenario now. I get a brief look at the Jaeger troops in front of my line before my orders come in. Min Armin, it appears the enemy are massing for an assault on your position. Hold the Ahin road for as long as you are able. You may reposition your brigade as needed. We begin to capture the point, and I begin to split off all the companies of skirmishers I can from my Jaeger, which is seven companies in all, from the rifles to our right, to just before the left flank. On the left flank, I cover my line with skirmishers from the line infantry battalion and some militia battalions. All the while, while I'm setting up this skirmish screen, the cannons of the Grand Battery begin to open up once again as Derlon's corps moves up. I move my skirmishers to the rye field just by the Charleroi to Brussels Road, as close as I can to the 95th Rifles, who will be a necessary part of our defense. Their slow but accurate rifle fire will help to secure our flank. In the background, we can see some of the men of Don Zalotz and Marconet's corps moving up for the assault. As I'm still rushing to extend my skirmish line down my left flank, and we see the cannons begin to open fire, and the parent battalion of my skirmishers is taking fire already. But I split off more men from it, now touching the Charleroi to Brussels Road. And we can see the massive clouds of smoke from the Grand Battery bursting in the background. Almost makes you wonder how they can shoot straight. While watching the Grand Battery open up, I'm extending the last of my skirmishers to my left flank. Now 
now going to my line battalion to split off more skirmishers now that the battalion of Jaegers have been depleted, splitting off two more companies, as well as a few companies from the militia, to secure my left flank as well as forming a second line of skirmishers. So my plan for this mission was to form two lines of skirmishers to hold the line as long as I can. After testing this mission once before, I note that the French attack really heavily on my left flank, so my plan is to fall back on my left flank and refuse it. And when they move into attack, Pax's Brigade will activate, and they'll counterattack for me just like in the real battle, or hold the line while I take the victory point. Anyways, as the last of my skirmishers get into position, the parent battalion continues to get bombarded, acting as a lightning rod so the rest of the skirmishers will be safe. I quickly tell them to take cover, but the amount of cannons that are firing makes taking cover from them almost impossible. Going back to the main line, I split off some more skirmishers from the line infantry and adjust the ones that are already there to more line up with the first line of skirmishers. Putting the second line just on top of the ridge, though they'll be in cover while they shoot at the French approaching the ridge. However, speaking of the French, long columns of French infantry are already approaching our first line of skirmishers, all the while I'm taking cover with the rest of my brigade as the cannons continue to fire on, and I don't want to have any unnecessary casualties, but it's already too late as the line of infantry has already taken a few, and we can see the massive hammer of Jolon's corps coming right for our first skirmish line as I continue to rush skirmishers over to my left flank. And something I noticed now, which I didn't notice before, is that a large portion of my brigade is not in the sunken road itself, but in the field just behind it. But I don't really do anything about that until later. But now the cannon fire has become too much for the parent battalion of the Jaeger, and they are falling back. If I was thinking, I would have put them into skirmish formation and put them on the skirmish line. And now I'm moving the militia to where the British regiments are to reposition them to the center of our line later on. Now first contact is about to be had between us and the French columns. However, instead of stopping and forming a line like I wanted them to, the French columns just march on through, pushing back my skirmishers with ease. Relatively few casualties as I tell my skirmishers to fall back, but that quickly turns into a retreat, which is extremely unfortunate as my, my plan accounted for the French to be delayed by my skirmish line for at least a few minutes. Seeing a few more columns far on my left flank, I decide to extend my skirmish line to cover my left flank. But on route, the skirmishers stop halfway, and so I take command of them and tell them to move into the same position. In the meantime, my main line reforms, but they are quickly pushed back once again as the columns continue to move forward. The center of my first skirmish line has little effect as they are pushed back with ease. But the skirmishers to my left have a little bit more time to stop and shoot at the enemy as they have no troops barreling down straight for them, and so they're able to put a bit of flanking fire into the rightmost columns of the French attack. As my first skirmish line rallies on the second skirmish line, some of the French columns halt and form line, relieving some of the pressure on our line. However, more of them move forward, eager to push into my troops in the hedgerows, but in climbing the ridge take heavy casualties.
and soon also halt in foam line. Not soon after, the Centro Mice first and second skirmish line break once again, the French resuming their assault, but face heavy fire. As we approach the crest of the ridge, we face heavy resistance from the Dutch skirmishers, but as we get close to the crest, we took heavy casualties from those in the hedges and canisters from nearby cannon. As the French columns continue up the ridge, they push back my skirmishers to the sunken road itself, where the skirmishers kneel in the sunken road and take more pot shots at their officers. But then, thankfully, the columns halt before they charge over our position, allowing our skirmishers to pour even more devastating fire into their ranks. As I move to form them up right by the hedges, and where there isn't space for a company, I move them between the line battalions, so they can rush in to quickly take place of any company that breaks. Some of the companies that fire in advance to get up the ridge, but for whatever reason in this game and in the previous game, Scourge of War where it seems to take more casualties when firing in advance and pulling back and firing. And the French battalions doing so is no exception, and so the ones doing so quickly stop. Some of the columns splitting off skirmishes themselves, which only adds to the bungled mess of Jalan's core. As the columns get closer up the ridge, they begin to take canister fire from Rogers and Bivelt's batteries of 9 pounders. Now I'm moving more of my skirmishers to flank the forces attacking the ridge. Going back to the left flank, the pressure is on as more battalions move in, easily pushing back any skirmishers I have in place, until the 7th line infantry is forced to open fire, but I'm determined to hold a little longer before I can fold in my left flank and allow Pax Brigade to take over. In the meantime, we can see one of the skirmish companies from the second line of skirmishers break from the center. However, it's only one of the militia, so I'm not particularly worried yet. As some of the skirmish companies reform, I send them into the path to hold the line against the increasing pressure of the French columns. However, one column gets way too close and I decide to pull back, denying them my flank. However, at the same time, I'm denying myself a good defensive position and telling Pax, basically inadvertently telling Pax troops to intervene. However, we can see just at the corner of the screen that some of his troops are already engaged, as the Hanoverians farther to the left are in even more danger. However, in the background, we can see a French battalion breaking, which is always a good sign. path backward until it reaches the right flank where the combined fire of the grasshoppers and our skirmishers are putting heavy fire into the French, potentially opening up the left flank of the French for a counterattack. However, I like to move more forces to my left flank to support the defense. In 
In the meantime, Pax Hollidozer are becoming involved as the Black Watch moves into the fray. Not only the game's front is breaking, plenty of ground to please. Gordon, get your bastards to the crest. Don't bother yourself, Pick. And my boys will hold them. Second will advance. Send them throngs back over the ridge. While the Highlanders move in for their attack, I move around my troops, moving my line infantry to the rear, moving my skirmishers to the front, to allow for my troops to take less casualties. This is relatively successful, except for the skirmishers refuse to move very far, and as they move, they take quite a few casualties themselves. But the line infantry gets to the rear successfully, as a blockwash move into the French flank. However, in the meantime, the skirmishers from the militia nearby withdraw. The line in the center is seeming to hold pretty well, but more forces are moving into my right, attacking the skirmishers and 95th rifles. However, our center is thin, growing thinner, as one company of skirmishers withdraw, and so I decide to commit my reserve of the relatively fresh militia unit, rushing them forward, which in hindsight wasn't particularly wise. On our left, more of our skirmishers are pulling back, but are being replaced by high end skirmishers, which are a few more companies, but smaller in number, because the AI prefers smaller companies for some reason. Unit makes it to the center and begins to open up on the French. And we can see so far that I've done quite a bit of damage to the French Corps. But seeing that the left is becoming a bit shaky, I move a company of skirmishers to support it. Seeing all the Dutch Belgians retreat, the English aren't impressed. A body of Belgian infantry which had positioned some distance in front fled when the enemy's approached and was honored with the hisses and cries of shame by our passing troops. Despite these criticisms, our troops are still holding quite well in the center, however many of the skirmishers have fallen back. However, the pivot of our line is held together by skirmish companies from both the Highlanders and the Jaeger Battalion, and is extremely vulnerable to French attacks. The French therefore haven't capitalized upon this, which I'm not complaining about. But it's still a risk. You see more of the Highlanders rush off as I move another, another skirmisher over to the hinge, basically. Over on the left side, I'm moving more skirmishers into line to have a much more effective field of fire. This one isn't really cooperating, so I take command and moving forward again. Moving all I'm moving back some of the other troops that are taking heavy casualties. But so far, with the support of the troops in Mahesan, we are holding the line quite well. However, going to the center, it appears more French columns are moving up to our left. So far the Highlanders are holding quite well, and they are so confident that they are beginning to fire in advance. However, their flanks are exposed as the Hanoverian linewear on their left flank have withdrawn, putting both their brigade and our brigade in danger. Going over to them, we can see that two of their battalions have reformed, but they are far away from the land, and they are not enough to plug the gap. Seeing this, the French make a renewed assault on our line, especially on our left flank. We take heavy casualties from the troops already taking cover in the land.
as the French push our left, I give them one heck of a surprise. Men, open fire on those Dutch traitors! Mon dieu! C'est les armes en Battalion, form on the left of the line of the Scots! Fire up! Push the crowds over the range! Fall back! Fall back! I form my troops to the left of the Scots as more troops move in. An officer moves in to rally the Black Watch as they form calm and move in to attack. As I go over to my right side, the cannons continue to bombard the French as they move up, as more battalions fall back. I reform my line to the left of the Scots, and they finally arrive. Even though the, I believe, Royal Scots changed their position, the 92nd Gordon Highlanders are also moving to the left, for their positions on their left flank to support the um, brigade, as they move another skirmish company up to support the pivot in our position. The Belgians return the fire of the enemy for some time, before retiring from the hedge. Holding the line but increasingly desperate, I move up one of my skirmisher companies to fill in the hinge of the door of our line as more of the French units barrel down upon it. So far, the left is holding quite well so far. As we can see, another battalion fall back. One of the nice things about skirmishers that is probably causing the left to hold is the fact that they get hit less than mine infantry. I exchange this for being more easily charged and pushed back. Going back to our right flank past the hinge of the door. I need to move my infantry once again to give the Highlanders a good line of fire as, a, as the French are firing and advancing once again. However, in doing so, they form a column and take a few casualties. And immediately after I do this, the Scots decide to move me. see another French unit fall back due to the fire coming from the Haysaw and the rifles. The rifles in turn are taking heavy artillery fire, and so I decided to put off another skirmish battalion from my militia to go help. Then fall by another, but I quickly changed my mind in time to revert back to the formation as it was getting quite small. It was around this point we, the Scots were on my left break. Well, some of the Scots in the upgrade, as well as I lose the victory point, which is the major turning point for the battle. And now we can see the high point where I have five, 500 points, but it quickly depletes. And so I move the general to rally my forces to stand. <laughs> and Byron moves up, being reckless in the face of danger, watching the French advance. As another column moves forward, more generals will rush about, and the, the French line is still quite messy. However, disaster as more brigades move into our left flank. The rifles and skirmish are being pushed back. But the French move up once again, close enough for our cannons to rake their ranks with canister fire. The even match the left of our line is completely broken now that the Scots. I think the Royal Scots break the line, but us and the Black Watch are holding. The enemy fists skirmishers are falling back as well. And I push forward some rallied skirmishers into our line. But they swiftly break. 
And there goes my like worship battalion breaking as well. Came at the most ironic time as the brigade begins to fall back entirely, piece by piece. But as they retreat, our men put a lot of hurt in the French regiments. But then the Blackwatch began to fall back as well. The French move up quickly to outflank our, our right flank, but I need the skirmishers so the rifles can open fire, moving them to the nearby hedges to give them flanking fire, as a French officer rushes by them, but then quickly changes his mind as the line is insecure yet. And the regiments continue getting raped by canister fire by the two batteries on our right flank. French being so confident they are far and advancing in our center, the strongest point of our line so far, but then quickly halt and reform. The slots here you can see on the bottom left corner take enough flanking fire that they withdraw as well. Now the 95th Gordon Highlander is the only ones holding our left flank, along with the 7th Infantry, who I desperately string out using skirmishers until the entire line has become skirmished by the companies. And eventually I moved the parent battalion into a skirmish formation as well to stretch out the line even further. I'm not sure if that has the same effect as the regular skirmishers. But anyways, when the skirmishers get into line, they take a lot of heavy casualties from the French. desperate to hold our flank from all these French regiments advancing. I actually canister fire as they advance up our right flank, firing over the heads and between the skirmishers in place in front of them. As the French advance on our right flank, the rifles begin to withdraw, and it also appears but is not known that La Haison has fallen, as French regiments leave from there and go nearby it, flanking the rifles, forcing them to retreat. More, more French battalions are withdrawing from the center as another column advances. The left appears to be relatively under control as our skirmishers hold the line. Looking on the map, it appears that our entire line has been snapped in half as the entire Hanover Brigade has fallen back, forcing back Pax Highlanders and also further and further Hanoverian troops far to the left flank. The remainder of Pax Brigade moving in to hold the line on our left flank, as more of forces were formed behind our skirmishers. Moving to the center, we can see two more French battalions have fallen back, but the rifles are overwhelmed and pushed back themselves. Thankfully, the Duke of Wellington sends in the King's German Legion to counterattack towards La Haison. Then the King's German Legion moved in with two line battalions and one light battalion, while the rest of our brigade attempts to hold the cannon and the rest of the line. And the Highlanders form column that counterattack the French advances, forcing back two of their battalions. Looking on the map, we can see that the line has been split in half and there's no forces to move in to support our brigade. Thankfully, as the French advance in calm towards our right, they face heavy canister fire before the King's Drum Legion move in to counterattack. However, they take heavy fire as well as they move in in calm facing the French lines. But the French columns get closer and closer to our line, so I have to fold back the last skirmish company on my right flank. We proceed to form line and risk pouring flanking fire into our militia battalion. And 
then they open a great volley into them. On the left side of whatever's left of our line, one of our final militia battalions on that flank falls back, taking heavy cannon fire, and just for the briefest of moments we can see that the French were capturing our position, but then it goes back to contested again, and so I move my troops into the sunken lane once again for one last attempt to hold the line, moving my skirmisher companies to support them as the Highlanders move into line. They break really quickly. As soon as I form them into line in the sunken lane, a French column approaches on their flank. I move to face them, but alas, the battalion breaks. And now the French are truly capturing this position, so I try to get my troops out of there. As the King's German Legion move to counterattack, forming line behind one of the French led infantry battalions. Seeing that there's nothing on my left flank, I move Bond to go by the artillery battery, but he's reluctant, and so I take command of him and I tell him to move. Further on our, on our left flank, we can see the last of the Highlanders and skirmish companies from my brigade have withdrawn. I'm looking back at the Ponsonby's cavalry, particularly the Scots Greys, who are, cap who are to counterattack soon. Thankfully, due to the intervention of the King's German Legion on my right flank, that light French infantry flank flanking us on our right quickly breaks as the King's German Legion fire into their back. Moving back to our right, we can see the King's German Legion counterattacking by firing and advancing towards La Haison with one of their line battalions, and the rifle is firing in support. The Duke of Arnson being reluctant to move from his position by the oak tree, urging the King's German Legion to fight on. Moving back to the center of my line, the French move in to attack my left, facing no resistance as Pax Brigade has entirely broken, and will continue to face little resistance as the only things left in my line are skirmishers. Going back to the left flank, the Kings from the Legion managed to break one of the French battalions, but considering how many casualties they took while firing and advancing, they reform into line. Going back to the center of my line, the Nieger break probably being the longest regiment to be engaged so far. Going back to my general, we can see I'm at 100 points, just over getting a draw. Then again, moving over to our right, the King's German Legion Battalion supporting our right flank has broken due to heavy flanking fire. At this point, I'm moving whatever battalions I have left into the line, moving the skirmish company to extend our line hoping we can hold the line long enough for the Duke to send in more reinforcements or the cavalry to counter charge. But just by looking at the map, I'm signing like a broken record at this point. The Duke is sending in no reinforcements, and the troops that are withdrawing are anything and everything that's in and around our position, including cannons, Highlanders, and my forces. And unfortunately, the only line battalion left behind our line taking cover are not entering the battle, even though some of them will eventually come under fire. We'll see you later. And now at this point, as the French continue moving on their flanking attack, I'm trying to move in forces to stop them, but at the same time, I'm considering withdrawing from my position. But right now, my plan is to hold the cannon so that it'll stay in place and fire a canister into the French. But my final division standing is taking heavy fire from three French battalions, including one column advancing forward to take over the final troops the final guns of Violence by Felt's battery.
but unfortunately, soon afterward, the, the battalion breaks, and I send back whatever forces I have behind the British lines, who, despite the closeness of the French, are still refusing to engage them, and are deciding to soak up bullets instead of actually returning fire. And I send my skirmishers over to support the last of Rogers' battery. While I send by them behind this house here. While French colonists finish the last of Bye Felt's battery. Bye Felt's battery, sorry. And then a French column charges the skirmishers of the King's German Legion quickly breaking them. And then they stop, so in column in front of the line battalion, taking heavy fire. By now the last time my brigade is broken, so I'm just going to quickly fast forward the rest of the scenario give a quick explanation on what happens. I quickly go over to the left part of our line and see that the Hanoverians are holding relatively at this point. Going back over to our line, the French charge the King's German Legion, but the King's German Legion quickly push them back before they reform. My, my skirmishers reform and I send them over to protect General Byland while Roger's battery fires canister at the approaching French columns. Captain Roger going over to the towards the French columns and Per Poncher, our division commander, is still holding the line despite having his entire division in this area broken. Meanwhile, the Gloucestershire are holding the line despite being fired upon and not resisting at all. So an officer goes over to rally them. Meanwhile, the officer of the King's German Legion goes over to rally the, his forces as they move towards and counterattacks the French. I'm looking at our point value as well, and then looking at our reserves that could have easily helped to push back the French attack. Then Ponsonby sends in the heavy cavalry to attack but only the Royal Dragoons, not the Scots Greys or the Six Inniskillen. I estimate that he's sending over the Scots Greys and Six Inniskillen to support the Hanoverians in the far flank. Meanwhile, the, the Gloucestershire are still taking heavy fire and resist, doing little to resist. And the cavalry charges, breaking one of the battalions, stops, forces one to surrender, and then charges again breaking the other battalion. But then a line behind it forms square, fires a volley, and, and halts the cavalry, though they continue their charge and are forced back. Meanwhile, these, the other cavalry is going to the other flank, and they charge again, breaking this time three battalions before the battalion behind them forms square, and then the cavalry takes heavy casualties again. Then the cavalry moves in again. I'm looking over at our line and the entire thing is getting wrapped up. I'm looking at reserves that could have been deployed again out of jealousy. Then a cavalry unit comes charging in, but this time, before they can reach, a battalion forms square and they're forced back. Then the cavalry charges again and, and breaks another battalion and another one forms square and they're forced back. And another one moves, stops just before it goes in the square, but is still forced back. You can see why I fast forwarded this bit, it's not very interesting. Their officer is pushed back, going to rally their battalions. And the cavalry is sent in once again. Probably absolutely exhausted at this point, but thankfully pushed back the French to some degree. Then the cavalry is sent in once again. And any guesses what's going to happen? If you guess form square, you're probably right. But the cavalry stops this time. It instead takes a volley opposed to standing. But now the scenario is over. It's a major defeat. We take nearly 2,000 casualties like I mentioned before. And the French take deceivingly few. Saying that they only took 1,200 casualties. Or so. But in reality, going over to Delon's corps, he took 6,000 casualties altogether. I guess only that 12,000 was our part of that. Anyway, 
flying over to our, our brigade, we take we took heavy casualties and delivered relatively few. And here's a score of the individual battalions. It shows so many because I had so many split off battalions, or as the game calls them, or skirmishers as I call them. We'll be covering over some of the other members of our division and supporting divisions as well. Just to see that there are casualties given and taken as well. For example, Bifelt's battery. Now going over to, I believe, Roger's battery. No, yeah, no, Kemp's Brigade, which disappeared. We can't find his units because he died. And Pax Brigade, most of his divisions or battalions are gone. Don't know why. Don't know where they'd be, actually. So if you know, please put them in the comments so I can find them. And Picton overall, losing about roughly half his battalion, or division even. Now Ross, that was a farther on the other side of, of La Haison. That's where his battery was. Now Rogers, that was the English English one, just to the sorry, the left of Hougamont or not Hougamont, uh La Haison. Now we'll go over the Royal Dragoons, or the Royal Regiment of Dragoons, I should say. And now here are some of the poor Hanoverians. And now for another episode of Adventures in Time. Get on the back of the horse. I will take you to Fourth College Q to see General Bureau. Why are all these men here? Are all these in danger? Sedan so first calls blocking the way. All the roads are impassable. Take your pick. The two blocks stand just like at Quatrebra. We need our troops here at Wapra. There is no telling where another French corps could be. Do you think that at Quatrebra and Ling was the most ideal scenario to engage the French in? Generals, we found the spy near La Selle. He claims to be part of Wellington's army. Huh? I'm no spy. That's what they all say. We need proof of that. Check his bag. Looks like a load of junk to me. A, a bell, a small water bottle, sandwiches. Wait, what's that? A small violet gun? Did you intend to poison us? Never seen a gun like this before. Where did you get this? Um, go on, speak. Ah! I'll tell you. I'm a pacifist, but I still want to do my part. Defeating the ogre. That gun is a shotgun that will knock out any foe. And that vial is filled with an ancient Chinese sleeping potion. You will have to prove your loyalties. You and Otto will have to go find the position of the French and poison them. So we will be caught a mile away. Well, the spy will be a civilian, and you will be a French cavalry man. Fetch the uniform from that prisoner. You will use that potion on the French. Sir, go on and slow down the French. Why sort this mess out? Come on, Svanhund, and give me your gun. 